Okay, we are live and direct right now. This is DJ Steven R of Zygote, and I am here with Raf from Gold Code, a dear, dear friend of mine I've known for years and years from the Bay Area. Um, Raf, welcome to the Architects and Hero live stream. Thanks for having me, man. It's good to be yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. I gotta silence my phone so that shit doesn't blow up. So, <laughs> man, I, I don't even know where to start. It's really funny because we talked about this a little bit earlier. It's like, I really needed to send you questions because I knew with the way that you and I both like to chop it up that it's gonna be like, dude, we're just gonna go all over the place. <laughs> yes, I, I like to talk and master of the long-winded answer, so I'll try to. No, it. man, it's, <laughs> this, is, this is long form. It's like, uh, this is our, these are our, uh, like I said, our cyberpunk fantasies come true. We get to take over the airwaves in some way, shape or form. <laughs> so it's all good, man. So, you know, it's been a while uh, since we really had a chance to, to, to catch up and to talk. I mean, you know, our history is in the San Francisco uh, Bay Area from the early aughts all the way, you know, until like the basically the end of the dot com boom. So tell me a little bit about, you know, uh, what you were doing in San Francisco, about some of the parties you were involved with, about your DJ and, and production life back there. Oh, man. OK, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> let's see okay well um let's see i got i grew up in la i grew up in burbank and i moved to the bay area in 92 um i had done my first party in la actually back in the summer of 92 party called x marks x marks the spot mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then uh and it had already gotten to the rave scene in la um and then you know moved here summer of 92 just when like really the bay area was hitting its stride uh, with rave scene. Um, so, you know, I was there for like the DJ Dan and ghost and Carlos and break beats and, you know, wicked crew and whatnot. Um, and so I really, I was, you know, I was going to parties for, for several years before I started getting into it. Um, I started at just, you know, as a promote promoting, you know, handing out flyers just so I can get into the party for free or whatever. And then, um, about 95, uh, like the crew that I was, you know, kind of going to parties with, we all went our separate ways to college. And, um, and uh, I met my now wife who, she was kind of pretty much the queen of the racing back then. <laughs> um, and we got involved with more promoters. And then I started DJing just for myself. I was never, I never even intended to play out. It was just something that I wanted to do at home. And uh, I got a chance to open my first event you know, big warehouse event uh, for Nomad Interactive. I don't know if you remember Tom Stacy from back in the day. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, it just kind of blew up from there. Um, around 97 or so, the, I mean, so this is kind of pre, you know, even before you got here, but around 97 or so, the scene in San Francisco kind of started going more towards like trance, mostly like, yeah, trance, drum and bass. It kind of started splintering a lot. And uh, instead of, instead of complaining about it, because it wasn't really my thing, um, I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna do my own thing. I'm just gonna do my own party, keep it niche, just, you know, for for what I wanna do, what I, what I wanna hear. So um, started do, throwing events in about 98 um, as Gold Code, like Gold Code Presents or whatever. And, um, and then, yeah, just kind of, let's see, 98 to, you know, did uh, worked with with a bunch of crews over the years. Um, let's see where we start. Uh, kind of the first real crew uh, was uh, this crew called Vehicle, and we did a party. We did um, party. You know, we had like a small monthly party, and it was all techno. And at the time, like techno was a bad word in San Francisco. Like it was not what it is today. Or you know, this is pre control years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so that was uh, me, Dave Ajou. Um, Ron, aka Ron Elder, and the Tourist, who are all still going to this day, doing their own thing. I think, yeah. you know, shouts out to them. Uh, and then, uh, and then that more then that you know we're doing a, we were doing at this little place called Anshabeen, and then. Uh, oh yeah, that's didn't that, that? Did that close recently? Um, it's called Our Bar now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. but um, that our parties did great. And then uh, the owner asked me to help with a Tuesday night that was going on there. And that was impulse. And that's how I met Claire and hooked up with her coach. Shout out to Claire. Claire. Hi Claire. Um, still in touch with her day. She's still doing stuff. Still going. Oh, yeah. strong. 
Um, so yeah, we did, did a party with, with Claire. That was great. We did that for a couple of years. Um, did electro before, you know, before electro clash, all that, um, started doing electro monthly at impulse, um, brought in, uh, cybrid Gustavo Lanza. So there was like a, you know, they're really Gustavo, prominent, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, live yeah, acts. Back then. Need photo. Yeah. Yeah. New photo music. Um, so, and then from, and then after impulse ended, um, Started working with Tokyo Electric, which was uh, Teflon Jacket. Jerry, yeah, Jerry yeah. Destruct. Shout out to Jerry. Shout out to Jim, Teflon Jacket, if you're mm -hmm. out there. Caltrop. Um, Caltrop. Shout out to Christoph. Techno, techno moms and dads for the win. You know, <laughs> yeah, tons of, you know, again, all these people are still, you know, doing stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, who else? Uh, sorry from, you know, and of course, Gustavo, you know what I mean? Audio Electronic. So that was kind of like a super crew of people, Tokyo Electric, and then that ended, and then you know, free range with Matt Bloom from cool. Seventy Seven Recordings. Shout out to Matt. Um, and then, and then after that, um, that was around. That went on until about two thousand six, and then I retired. I retired from promoting. Yeah. Um, Which is a, you know, to, honestly, I completely empathize with the retiring from promoting thing because where you and I overlap is I. I started in around 2000 doing the under the radar parties in the mission at 20 at was what was 26 like, mix. Yeah. 26 yeah. mix. And, and, and like our early things were like, I think that one of the first things we did was Richard divine and we had Kristen Miltner do video. And the whole concept was to do was to match the sort of the, this, this crazy electronic music with like different artists. And I think at that time, I think Claire rolled through Kit Clayton rolled through. We had gold chains. We had, uh, safety scissors. We had um, uh, we had uh, Sutek, who's now Rose. Uh, R Rose, yeah. R Rose, and we've got Nick, you know, but everybody he was kind of doing stuff at the time would would be in different camps. We had Twerk, Sean Hatfield, who was also part of this sort of like I guess for lack of a better word, the laptop techno. Yeah, the IDM era. Exactly, and, and, it, was, and it was super, and it was super niche. Like people don't understand. Dan, like how niche it was in San Francisco at the time. Like at the time, you know, the big, the big parties were, it was all like deep house mm -hmm. or trance yep. or I mean, you still had wicked, but I think that we was a lot of people that would kind of like come from different scenes. Cause I know John Howard would play a lot of the, the synth parties that, um, Brian Jackson yeah, and right. Nick were doing. So there, there was this whole little pocket of people kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a little, yeah, a right. little group of. Parties, yeah. And then, and then he even got Jenny. Who was doing rock and roll clubs to be part of uh, their thing, Memory Systems? When Memory, memory Systems, yeah, oh, I remember that show. You could, you could have a little diagram from like you know 2000 to like 2005 of all of these different crews and people. There was Blast House, and I think Monica is still doing stuff, but Will from Blast House and, yep, and yep, Stefan yep. and those guys, and and that's where Devin uh, Devin Simonovich, who I you know was C Troll doing the video stuff, and so there was like this art music techno kind of like all these different splinter factions that were doing things together um and i think that's where you and i first crossed paths and then i yeah, started yeah. doing more of like a down tempo night at julep on a weekday and then everyone would roll through and just play whatever that's right i remember i met uh, jonah sharp at julep that yeah that was yeah, it's just such a trip to think about like the amazing people like you know and and like the hard kiss brothers and jonah sharp and you know single cell orchestra and all of these people like Miguel from Single Cell just released something new a couple months ago too. Like things are still. Yeah, I saw the interview. That was that was great. That's great to see. Thanks, man. Yeah, and, and, well, I just want the thing. The thing is now it's like the the way that the music communities are built out. I think it's very specific. Like there are certain groups of people that kind of need to support what their their I guess their family of people are doing. And I think that's how, you know, honestly, I think that's how the beat scene really thrived here in LA. When you had like Flying Lotus and Gaslamp Killer and all those guys, they clicked up and they had like the same group of people all focused through, you know, Kevin who was doing the the kind of the behind the scenes production stuff along with the, like the Alpha Pup label thing, you know, it's, but you got to get like your core group of people and just, you know, you know, put everybody on blast because there's so much really good music, especially from people that have been in the game for a while right now um, that I, I feel like it's, it's, it's doing everybody a disservice to not have it out there and in front of people's ears, um, you know, cause, cause even like accelerator or all these other tastemaker magazines or whatever are, 
kind of in their own niche thing now. <laughs> you know, it just it's well, yeah, a, yeah. I mean accelerator too for San Francisco. I mean, you know, shout out Chris Orr, shout out, what, shout out to Andrew, Christine, yeah. shout out yeah. Marty Gotero, what up? Yeah. Um, you know, so there's <laughs> so many people. You know, the 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 thing I always strove for was you know, there's always been big part. There's always gonna be big parties mm -hmm. uh, and all that. I always just wanted to, um, just like my own sets, just you know, kind of digging out music. I always wanted to dig out people as well. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, even back, even back then, it was about finding like, oh yeah, this one person's a great producer, a DJ, but not a great promoter. You know what I mean? Like, hey man, come out, come play a show. You know what I mean? Um, come meet these other people, these other like-minded people. You know what I mean? so that something can grow out of that. And that paid humongous dividends, not just for me, but for a lot of people. And it was, and it was great to give back that way. Like that was, um, that was something that I got out of the early scene was, uh, you know, I started, I started, I started going to parties in the you know very early nineties in L in LA. And the, the thing that struck me was that it was the people that were going to these parties were from all these different scenes. Mm -hmm. And no one was the expert in it. It was just this new experience to everybody. And what was cool about that was it was like a, a something that everyone had in common. You know what I mean? This is new to me. I don't know this. Let's just have a good time. You know what I mean? And so and I, and so I, I that always made a big impression on me. And I wanted to provide that. I'm like, hey, you know what? Here is, you know, when whenever I was doing a party or 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 any kind of project, it's like, hey, here is something to draw you know you're drawn in by what we have in common and then here's some other stuff that maybe you haven't come across and so here's the opportunity to open that door and check it out or meet these other people that think like you you know and build that that's community so, that's so incredibly rare that happens um you know it's it's this mixed bag with the internet and i think you and i have both been kind of like the propagators of you know of building building the the infrastructure around that and you and i have both been tech industry people for a long time but you know uh, the the downside to this is that you don't necessarily have the same curatorial experience that you do uh when you would go to these parties or you would read top 10 lists or you would really be more viscerally or tactically engaged with the people in the community that made that music Right. So whether it's techno or house and, you know, I'm I know things need to be labeled because that's how people process things. Um, but I've never been a big fan of, of kind of restricting a sound uh, at all. I mean, I, I, I like really experimental stuff, but I love dance music. All the new Zygote material that I'm working on um, right now with with Mark Pistol, that's all very like electro and acid oriented. Also, I'm going to be going to work with Sean Deason in Detroit uh, sometime in September as well to kind of continue working on this album. But um, but again, like I'm going more in a dance direction, but I don't I don't see that as a huge differentiation between like the more experimental stuff, right? And let's like if we fast forward now, look at you where you are right now here in Southern California, um, and you're doing wow five years. But first off, congratulations Thanks, on man. five years on yeah. Omakase Radio. That is a big, huge endeavor. Doing fucking Thank you to for five years is like, you know, like that's that's just that's championship right there, man. So so tell me a little bit about Omakase Radio, about your relationship with KU KUCI, uh, and and all of the all of the good stuff that's come with doing that show. Oh man. Okay. So yeah. So so we kind of covered to two thousand six. So yeah, fast forward to now and. Um, Man, omakase. So, I got I, I retired from promoting in 2006. Um, like my career was taken off, and you know my day job or whatnot. And so I'd, I had to really devote more time to that. Uh, me and my wife were starting a family and whatnot. So it's just you know promoter days were behind me. Um, and but I still needed an outlet to. I just always needed an outlet, or it would just drive me. It would be, it'd drive me crazy. Like, I'm 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 definitely a workaholic. Like I always just need to be doing something. And I, and I always need a creative outlet. So after 2006, I started my a music blog, which was kind of like the thing back then, right? Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Love Fingers, you know, and that was kind of, he's kind of the first one I knew about. Um, and uh, and again, it was just to spread like knowledge. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I've been, you know, obsessed with this kind of music for years and years and made all these connections. Here it is, you know, for everybody to, to kind of take in and then after the blog ended, um, I got into my kind of my production. My PA. I'm sorry. What was the name of the blog? Gold Code. 
the name of the blog is Gold Coast. Crazy theme here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, and then, um, and then when I moved to then I, in by 2014, like I, you know, I wasn't really playing out that much. I wasn't really doing much. The blog had ended by then. My production stuff was kind of on the back burner as well. Yeah. And I, and so suddenly I found myself in Orange County, which is like the opposite. Of the Orange County. Yeah, sure, sure. You know what I mean? And um, and I and uh, I met. Uh, I had taken this job in LA and one of my front end developers, he would, I always walk by, he like sat, you know, a couple of cubes down for me. And I always walk by and he'd always have his, uh, his monitor with the, with, you know, with the iTunes artwork. Right. Mm -hmm. So I walk by, Oh, and I'd, I'd, I'd look by and see what he's playing. I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. Like, you know, and so I'd be like, Oh, that's a good song. That's a good song. And then one day he was playing uh, Mr. Flaggio, take a chance, mm -hmm. which like, you know, if you're not into Italo disc, Italo disco is kind of like a not it's so good niche, pleasure yeah. of mine. But um, you know, if you know Italo disco, like take a chance. That's like you know my one of my favorite Italo songs. So then I was like, all right, man. Like you know, now we gotta talk. Like, what do you know about what you know about you know Mr. Flaggio? Mm -hmm. And so that you know uh, found a great you know made my first kind of new music friend down here in L.A. And that was Floppy Disco. Shout out to Floppy Disco. Nice. And. Um, and he had done a show at KUCI about 10 years prior to that. And this, you know, this, this dude has amazing taste and just, you know, great, very eclectic. And, um, and so he's all, Hey man, you know, my friends kind of go to me to get back into, into doing a show there. You know, it's like 15 minutes from your house, you know, would you be interested in doing it? Mm. And, um, and I'm like, hell yeah. Like I, I need something, you know, I def I need something to do. And I had actually tried to do a, a radio show at Stanford. I, I'd done like the training class at Stanford back in like 96 or something like that. And I was doing, it was me and a friend of mine that were gonna do it. And she ended up dropping out at the end and she was gonna kind of, I was gonna be kind of like the resident DJ and she was gonna kind of handle the, you know, the rest of it. So, right, right, right. so she dropped out and, and so we didn't end up doing it, but it was always on the back of my mind, like, oh, someday it'd be cool to do a radio show. And that was kind of my first introduction to mixing and whatnot. I used to, you know, I grew up, you know, grew up in Burbank. I, you know, I'd catch K-Day on a good day or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and sure. mix shows yeah. were always like, yeah. you know what I mean? Or like a Fly ID show, shout out, you know, rest in peace, Rob One. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, those shows, they, that's, you know, those mix shows would push the boundaries, especially college radio. Like they play anything and everything. And right. it opened a lot of doors for me. And I, and I thought, you know, I would love to do that for people someday. So, so, so hitting it, hitting it like that's that's hitting it five years is a is a huge milestone, and I know you've had some like just amazing acts on there. But I want you to tell me personally, like, what has been your uh, kind of like the most memorable guest? Like, I have a couple that I have in mind, but I want to hear, I want to hear, like, okay, five years in, you guys are hitting when the official anniversary is when? I mean, it passed. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was June sixth, I believe. That was okay. the official. So, it's between, been, so yeah, it's been a minute. <laughs> so back in June was your five year. Tell me about some of the more memorable uh, sets that you had uh, go off on uh, on, well, the, on the show. Every guest. So I, I mean this. Like every guest has been special, mm -hmm. but uh, but if I had to like narrow it down to like one that really just like oh my you know I can't believe this is happening. Uh, Egyptian lover, man. Like we had Dude. one of our first guests. Props to Floppy Disco for hooking that up. But we got. This was right before he put out 1984, which is kind of his like you know comeback. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It right, it's like 1984 had just come out, and really he was gracious enough to come through in the pouring rain. Like, but he, we did like a six-hour show that day, oh, and shit. he did. Not only did he do, he did he did a live show for us. Mm -hmm. He did like a you know he did a DJ set for us. I mean, he brought his 808. Wow. Like, wow. I mean, it was. That was you know dream come true really yeah. like and and you could not meet a more humble just great person yeah. shouts to egyptian lover man really like and it was it was great so yeah i would say man egyptian lover you know i've had garth comes on every few few you know okay and that's that's years. you know that, like that garth i mean i grew i grew up going to wicked yeah. the wicked party was just amazing you know what i mean like yeah i like lived you know wicked and the gathering and all that stuff so so yeah, to have Garth on the show, that was a big deal. It's always a big deal, and he always turns it out. But man, there's so many people. Like, you know, 
I've had, you know, Aju on, Aju comes on every oh, year. Mark, Dave Aju. Like, it's really been yeah, great, like, specifically for Mark, aka Dave Aju, from someone in our camp who was like working their ass off and doing all of the putting in, just putting in time, putting in time, putting in time in the studio, like playing open decks, doing everything he could to just like get in there and to see his rise in the scene has that, that is, that has been a big, um, that has been a big thing for me to, to watch, to, to see that happen because he's just incredibly talented as a musician and just a completely, uh, just, just couldn't be a nicer guy. You know what I mean? And the huge thing I respect too, is that he did it his way. You know what I mean? Like he never compromised and that's, and it's always been a good, a great example. Like, you know what? You can you can do it. You just have you just have to stick to your principles and you know what I mean. Just like yeah. just do it. Just do it. It'll. And I remember. I remember when the guys from uh, from Circus Company actually came out and played Under the Radar the night that Mark was in the out and in the mix. And I think you know there's a like a logical trajectory. And then over time, those guys connected and they put him on blast. And all of a sudden, you know, uh, Dave Ajou is like international uh, international DJ. You know what I mean? And I think that's just. I think it's so fucking rad, and um, the depth of his music too is just that's that's a really big deal, man. And so the, you've had some really really special things happen on on Omakase, and I'm just curious, like you know, you guys are hitting your five year. I know, obviously, in the age of COVID, when we're all fucking masked up and quarantined and in our homes and socially distanced, that there's not just a whole hell of a lot you can do. But is there anything that you would like to try to plan to to do? For that five year, like you, you have. Yeah, yeah. I, I already had a, I already had an all nighter in the works, mm -hmm. and um, and also, like I said, the current crew I'm working with, Send Return, um, great bunch of guys out of LA and, and Long Beach and whatnot. Um, shout out to Eric Vemeyer, uh, who else? Perry Mason, and uh, Tim Mana Machine, like a great group of guys. Again, like you know, in a whole other generation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so yeah, we're we're gonna do an all night party, and just, I was gonna you know bring in some live acts and some some DJs. Uh, I mean, I mean, man, really, there's so many people that have been on the show that I can legit say like you know this, this was extra special. Um, but uh, we're still gonna do that, you know, when it when, when if and when it comes back, you know, the, I've, Maybe I I mean, for the six year anniversary. Yeah, you know, what I mean, I've been doing this for so long. I, there's so many times where I thought, okay, I'm out. You know, what I mean, this is it. I'm done. And then well, I mean, here I, I am back again. You know, I, I got to be honest. I've just accepted it now. Like just, you know, if, greater, if, you, if you, and this is just strictly from my experience, if you're a creative, if you're a right brain person, if you're a musician, if you're an artist, whatever it is that you're working on, like at the end of the day, if you're not working on your stuff, it's like a pressure release. You get this sort of yeah, like, yeah. you know, if you're not it's doing it, it, it's, exactly, it yeah. it's a really unhealthy thing, you know, like, and people that got to do it, got to do it. And the thing is, I'm not stopping. Like, I'm not doing anything. And I think, you know, Q-Tip from A Tribe Called Quest was interviewed. And they're like, so where, where, where do you see your rap career? And he's like, I don't. You know, I, I what I see is me playing like the jazz guys play until they're like 95. And then their last gig, they go off stage left. And then they're sh going to shuffle off this mortal coil. Because yeah. that's yeah, just yeah, what yeah. you know what? That, that's exactly <laughs> the right way. That's exactly it. Like, it's just kind of a... You just see where it takes I'm it. Gonna, I'm never going to not do this. I'm never going to not do this. And I have been able to kind of connect with some people, specifically in Los Angeles, too. I mean, you know, the obvious one is M M Miguel Fierro from Single Cell Orchestra, who's, who's putting out just, I think, the best music of his career right now. And I definitely think he should be put on blast. There's also the Mutoid crew that, that was doing a, yeah, a monthly. Yeah, TR and Nick, what's up? Yeah, yeah and there's, uh, there's, uh, there's Randy. You're right. There's Randy, who's Randy J, who's out. He's been doing shit in the scene in LA for a million years, but still was holding down a residency at Blipsy Bar. Um, there are, uh, you know, pockets. There's obviously the, um, you know, uh, Droid Behavior. Droid Behavior's another. Yeah, shout out to Mo. What's up? Yeah. Owen is still here doing stuff. Like, you know, uh, I know Kenny Larkin's in LA now too, man. So I'm still in LA. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing I need to get stuff. Kenny if you're listening, man. I'm. I'm I need to come on. We need to chat. So, you know what? One thing that one thing that I've been uh, proud to do for on the show is is to again like dig out people that have been around forever. And LA is full of. I mean, I remember there's like the Passion Crew. You know, um, like you know Steve Loria, Joaquin. Um, those guys, like, 
you know, play, they've been around forever and man, their, their wealth of knowledge and skills. is like, like, why would, why would you not want to have them on your show? You know what oh, I mean? Right on. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, or like, uh, I mean, there's so many, I, 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 the more I dig into these, like LA is so big, right? It's like how many San Francisco's you start digging around to all these corners of the scene and you find so many people and like, it, that's been great. Just, you, the, you, you give them an opportunity to like be heard again, but also, man, you get so much out of it. You know, like the records that I find out about, I mean, uh, like one of the biggest, I would say like success stories on the show, like do funk freaks, shout out to funk freaks, shout out to loser and, and Debo, you know, they have a humongous following. They're like, you know, part of like the boogie community mm -hmm. and humongous following in, in, uh, in the in Southern California and, and they have chapters all over the world mm. and, um, and just fantastic music. I mean, they, they have music from their, you know, from their previous generations too. And like, dude, they don't play a bad record. And every time yeah. I hear a set from them, I'm like, what is that? Like, I've never heard of that before. And it's just amazing. It's like train spotting as a teenager again, man. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, so it's, <laughs> so it's kind of like, it's, instead of like train spotting records, right? Like you're bringing in people that, you're train spotting people like, oh, you know, if you haven't heard this person, you know, David Simpson, who's like, you know, he was a member of the Paradise Garage. Like he lived that and he he, DJs, so he he comes on every so often and, you know, drops all this like, you know, all this disco that, man, if you you just like had to be there for some of these records, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm saying like back in the record store days, there's all these records that like, you know, if you weren't if you were there, like the day the shipment came in and like you happen to like you know, be there for like when this white label was available and like, and that's yeah, it. There's so many it's things like that. You know, wealth, I mean? It's a wealth of knowledge. And I think, you know, on yes. that note, it's, it's like right now, like with COVID, you know, we're doing shit like this live stream thing and you've got your, your shows that you're posting on your SoundCloud, the digital channel for, you know, DJs and producers and bands and artists right now has become like a lifeline to the outside world. And, you know, I know that you have already been really engaged in sort of that digital content piece of it, but where do you see with Omakase and like you as a producer, uh, where, where do you see, I mean, are you, do you have any plans to maybe start doing like live streams or anything like that? Or, or what, what, what are your thoughts around sort of so, taking that production and, and, and applying that to the Omakase, uh, you know, family? Oh man. So, uh, so I've, I've been doing lives. I was doing live streams for like a couple of years before the mm -hmm. pandemic mostly through Facebook live. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and also like, you know, dabbling with like motion graphics and stuff. Another shout out to floppy disco kind of dragged me into that. Um, you know, what part, uh, tutorial? your boy sounds like he's hooked up. <laughs> yeah, no, like I said, there's, I, there's a lot of people that have really contributed to, to what I've been able to do. And I'm just eternally grateful. Um, but no, in, in the, the live streams, you know, once the pandemic started, it just got so saturated. Um, and so, so I kind of like, I kind of took, took a step back from live streaming. Also, we're not doing the, the we're not able to record in this in the KUCI studio right now. Right. So, um, so and I need to pre-record my shows. Like they're not they're no longer done live on Sundays. They're like I record them on Thursdays now. Right. Um. So, so yeah, and it's usually late at night. So I was kind of you know no one's really online and like, um. So I kind of stepped away from that for a minute. Well, but, I mean, we're gonna start. We're gonna start doing them like, again. To have like evergreen content that people can always come to and kind of pick and choose on their own, right? That's what I love about your your SoundCloud. It's like, dude, I'll I'll go in and pick any of those mixes. I can just roulette yeah. that. I can just roulette that, and there's not a bad one post. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, well, that, well, that's that's the idea of maintaining the SoundCloud archive. Is just like to you know. So yeah. So so the music is there. Mm -hmm. The music's always there, available. Um, but for live stream, you know, we've been start, I've been seeing how other people have been doing it and, it, you know, turning it more into events, mm -hmm. uh, which is cool, man. I like it. Like, um, you know, a lot of great ideas out there and we, we are going to start doing that for send return, um, as part of the send return crew, um, our one year anniversary is coming up this month. And so we're going to, we're going to do a live stream with starting with them. And then we'll probably, the plan is to do one every month until we were able to get back in the club. So yeah, so just kind of kind of focus. So that's not so much. Like, so tell, hey, me, tell, me a little bit about, tell me a little bit about who's um, 
who's out there and you said the sin return crew. Can you tell me a little bit about those guys and what they're up to and kind of how you started working with those guys? Yeah, no, that's a great story. Um, so send return. It's uh, this, this crew from, uh, again, they're, they're kind of scattered between long beach, LA and, and orange County. Mm -hmm. Um, they're part of a, a bigger thing called Camp Return that started a few years ago, and one of their one of their uh, member one of their like core members, uh, this guy Kenny DJ Tarson, he interned on my show like God at this point probably four years ago, and um, and kind of an interesting situation like him and his friends were all like engineer stu engineering students rock climbers. Mm -hmm. So they would go to these remote places to go rock climbing. And then, you know, they got into like house music and sound system. They like built a sound system and started throwing parties out there. And that grew into a camp out like that got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then um, I remember, like, I remember, you know, Kenny was interning on my show. I'm like, oh yeah, you know, check out these labels, check out these parties in LA. And uh, one of my favorite parties at the time still is, is uh, Acid Camp, shout out to Aaron. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I'm, and I, so I ran into to them at Acid Camp, like I don't know, probably a year after the internal on the show, and I met his friends, and um, you know, fa kind of fast forward another year or two later, they they asked me to come play their camp out, which by that time had grown to like I don't know six seven hundred people. Like it was, you know, it was awesome. It, you know, it, it it reminded me of like, you know, kind of like. Free, and I don't know if you remember Freedom from back in the day or like, oh, sure, yeah, 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 or, you know what I mean, or like Sunset Camp Out, stuff like it has that vibe, right? Uh, and again, whole new generation, right? So, mm -hmm. went and played their party, had a great time, uh, fant I mean, like a fantastic party, and um, and then and then Eric Vemire, who's kind of like the you know, he was like the head of that at the time, he's like, hey, you know, this is this is really great, you know, we all get along great, why don't we start something monthly? At um, at my my buddy's bar in Long Beach, the Good Bar, you know, shout out to Man Machine. Um, so we started doing this party last August uh, as Send Return, and and every every month has just been bigger and better and like, um, you know, they again they're all they're all engineers now. So they, like they said, they built their own speakers, oh, like lighting awesome. fixtures. Like we've all just kind of been, you know, throwing in our stuff, our know how. And then you know, I use my promoter marketing experience to, you know what I mean? And, uh, and yeah, man, it's been great. Like I said, it's been great to be working with like a whole new, you know, fresh group of people and like, well, that, you know, really understand the music and the vibe. Like, you know, connect right? with those guys and have them, you know, and, and cause I, yeah, I think on this live stream thing, we could actually do multiple people in here. So oh I man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, they're all interesting characters. Nice. Yes. Yes. So, so, so you're working with the Send Return crew. You're you're hitting your five year stride with Omakase Radio. I want to know about Gold Code's uh, discography, and I want to know about stuff that you're working on now. Wow. Okay. So let's see. Uh, been producing since about '99. Started with Rebirth. I remember Propeller Heads Rebirth. Uh, that? Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. Back in the day, like the the Alpha. Day. You know. <laughs> the, Pre-reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah pre-reason. And, um, and you know, it's always just stuff for myself, just like DJ tools or whatnot. Like, I, 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 I want to say I dabbled in it because knowing a lot of producers and, like, what they put into it, you know what I mean? I was not doing that. I was just kind of like, you know, making some tracks here and there, playing them out here and there, whatever. Um, and, then, uh, and then around 2009, again, like, this was kind of a lull. You know, I wasn't producing events anymore. It was kind of a little bit of a lull. In, in playing out and whatnot. And um, and Gustavo Lanzas, man, he's always kind of my guru for like hardware production and, and whatnot. And and I posted a song that he likes. He's like, hey man, I'm starting a label. You know, let's, you know, let's kind of like, you know, let's, you know, finish this track and we'll put it out and, and you know what I mean? Like get serious about it. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. So I did. And, uh, and so I, I put out my first single um, the day after with on on nude photo music i think it was back in 2010 by the time it came out and uh and man it was you know it, it was kind of like i've always been into electro i've been a huge electro dj nerd forever and um and so it was kind of like this ominous sister electro track you know this name after i named it after this this uh tv movie that scared 
the crap out of me when I was a kid. The day after, I don't know. Some people, you know, of our age probably remember that. But uh, but you know, electro to me has always been like kind of this ominous force. You know, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that was you know that was a great experience. Um, you know, got remixed by John Druckmann, Bass Kittens, and uh, Jonah yeah, Sharp. Jonah and, Druckmann and Bass Kittens. Yeah, yeah. yeah was like, have you heard Have you heard uh, Texas Chain Store Manager? I haven't heard that one now. It's uh, Jack Dangers and John Druckmann. I'll put that on the side. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I heard about the project though. Yeah, you got, yeah. You got a remix from John Druckmann on that. That's so yeah. Good. Dude. No, and Jonah yeah. Sharp, and Jonah Sharp, and, yeah, and Chris Forenzi, and audio, you know, audio electronic. Uh, and then you know I did a bunch of remixes after that, and it was great. I was doing a live PA. Um, shout outs to Jeremy Bispo for getting me to do that too. Shout out to Jeremy. Hey, man, you yeah. do a live PA. As you like yeah. it, do it. Yeah, as you like it. You know that video is up on on the web somewhere. Um, and then uh, yeah, I mean that was going good. And then do the birth of the second kid, and and again career growing pains. Like you know, I mean, kind of went on the back burner. But after all those years, um, finally, you know, I'm in a place where I've got my studio set up and I've been doing stuff and I'll probably, I'll probably be putting out stuff by next year. You know what I mean? Like, well, I will definitely, yeah. definitely be keeping my ear out for that, man, because I'm really like your style is just kind of right in my pocket, man. And I, and I really, really dig what you've been doing. Um, you know, it's, it's nice. funny because it's like, you, you never know where things are going to net out. And, and in terms of the time and, and, you know, also being a dad and kind of understanding what it's like to juggle, uh, I guess, for lack of a better word, adult responsibilities with how you're going to, you know, carve out space to do your work and how you're going to produce things. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people kind of go by the wayside in this. And I, I think it's been really interesting. Um, I, again, shout out to, to Christoph here who, who started that whole techno moms and dads thing. And it's oh. a really kind of fascinating study to see like, you know, I mean, you've seen someone like Jonah Sharp who successfully navigated fatherhood and family life and, you know, m you know, managed to keep a, a music career going and, and some other folks that are in the scene, the, the Rob, uh, not, uh, Gavin Hardkiss, you know, like has a beautiful family and is able to maintain and still producing. And also I'd be remiss if uh, I didn't say, you know, uh, just, R.I.P. to Robbie, man. That that was uh, yeah, yeah. That was uh, yeah. Our kiss. yeah, yeah. It was a tough thing. Um, but you know, but to see there, there's some really, really successful people that are out there that can navigate, um, you know, different parts of their lives. And this is a conversation that seems to kind of the the through line with this is that, you know, how how do you how do you get to a point where you're able to kind of manage all of these different things in your life and do it in a way where you're still giving everything that you need to give to other, you know, other, other segments, you know, of your family and your career and different parts. I mean, it's a, it's a struggle. It, it really is. I mean, but for me, I've been able to, to sort of incorporate my, you know, things that, that I'm doing like this or production into, this is also my office space. So I can immediately move into like checking emails and doing, you know, design work and kind of doing the flow of the other things that I work on. How have you found that yourself as like a balance between those things? Dude, that's a great question. That's a fantastic question. And when you know the answer, let me know. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, no, you know what? Uh, you mentioned earlier uh, your party at Julep. I think that was one of the last under the radars that I remember. Mm -hmm. And and that it's funny that you that you brought that up because that night I met Jonah Sharp for the first time. And, and by that time, you know, he had already his kid was already you know like a, he was already like ten or eleven or something like that at the time. And um, and I remember, and this was like, I think my wife was pregnant at that time with our first kid. Wow. And I remember I asked him about, we ended up having a conversation about that. Like, yeah, you know, what happens after you become a dad and you're still involved in the scene? Like what happens? You know, cause he was still doing it. And I mean, I, I remember at the time too, he was kind of like, there's been a lot of, how you put it, resurgences of Jonah Sharp over the years, right? Like, like, you know what I mean? There'll be times where like, he's playing out all the time and then times where he's like, not, you know what I mean? Doing production or whatever. And then he comes back, you know what I mean? And so he was a good, he was a huge inspiration. I remember we, talking with him, he gave me a lot of good advice and he was just a good example of like, Hey man, you know, you can do it. Like, it's just, you know, you gotta, you gotta be uh, mindful of your priorities and, you know, you just get better at managing stuff, right? Like um, a lot of the stuff that I learned, uh, you know, running parties and, and all these, you know, projects helped me in my professional life. And, um, and I've just, you know, I mean, kind of like the stuff I learned from my 
my professional life, like kind of, you know, I kind of reinvested those lessons into, into, uh, into the music stuff as well. So, you know what I mean? They've kind of gone hand in hand, complemented each other. And it, and it's very difficult. It's mm -hmm. very typical. Like, so, like, so I'm, I consider myself a workaholic. Like, like I'm always yeah. doing stuff, but yeah, dude, I'm always, you know, sometimes I spread myself thin and you know what I mean? And, uh, it's a cycle of that, you know, and you just get better at it. Right. Uh, or you start picking and choosing what, you know, you want to put your, your time into. So it can, it can be done, but you gotta, yeah, you gotta always just be mindful of maintaining everything, including your health. You know what I mean? Like get sleep. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, yeah I still go out. Fingers aren't exactly known for, uh, their, their stellar, stellar life choices. But you know, that's, that's how, you know, if you want to, if you want to stay in the game, like that's what you do, right? Like, like I, I can still go out, you know, I can still, I, I can still go out and, and, uh, and hang. Yeah. But you know, I'm not. I'm just not doing it every day or every week. Dude, I was gonna say, like, because I I know there's some people that are in our scene from back in the day that are still just banging it out, just on a regular. And I'm like, I get in that loop when I'm around a couple of folks, and after 24 hours, I'm like, bro, I yeah, I'm I'm gonna tap out. I need to go back to Squaresville for a while because I'm. So I'm, you know, I'll see you next month. Yeah, I'll yeah, see you exactly, next month. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Like, exactly. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, I can't, I can't, I can rave until like 11, you know, um, but I, it's really funny because there are, I, I feel like that with the demographic shift that's happening and you've got sort of a bunch of kids that are, that are doing stuff now that it, it's really great. But I, I do really, really feel like there's a, um, there's a large group of people that are kind of from our specific demo that are all Gen X kids that came up in like the 90s and the 2000s that still have a lot of interest and engagement to do different things, but but there really isn't sort of like a, a, a great outlet to kind of engage in the same way. Because again, you get to a certain point in your life and your priorities just shift and things are different. You know, I, I feel like there almost needs to be, um, I think, uh, and I'm trying to think, um, I want to say it's Claude Young who, who wrote this, but he was talking about how people want to book him and they, and they want to do all these kind of like nostalgia 90s techno things. And he's like, that's not my thing. That's not what I'm right, doing. Right, right. I've got new material that I'm working on. I'm pushing forward with my shit. And I, and I think that's something that's, you know, I think automatically you get to a certain point and you're like, oh, we're going to do like a throwback night or a 90s night or whatever. That's all fine, you know? And frankly, like the way that, you know, pre-COVID clubs were working is that, you know, if you weren't doing some kind of like a throwback or a, uh, or a night that was focused on a, a popular, you know, subgenre or whatever, I mean, for the general club, they got to do those things to kind of like pack things in. But I do think there's this undercurrent of people that grew up on house, that grew up on techno, that are deep in the underground thing. And they're, they're grown ups. They're past the point where they just want to fucking, you know, stay up all night and get gacked out and party like that. But there's still a big engagement for the music. And I think those people are kind of moving into this realm of like, well, I want a place to go I, to, to go hear the music, to see my friends and to still like at the end of the night, not feel like I'm, 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 you know, I need to stay up till seven in the morning, but I want to go out and have an outlet for that. And I think that's something that there's just not enough of, right? There just aren't enough people that are focused on people that want to be engaged in the music, but they maybe also want to like have a really nice dinner. Like these are people with like way more disposable income, first of all. So just in terms of basic demographics, it's like, where, where do you find that fine line between like, I want it because I don't know of it. I mean, there are bars and clubs and shit, you know, raves all night long which is great, but like, I want to find something that's just got a little bit more sophistication, maybe focused on an art gallery more. I, I don't know what the answer is, but I know for myself as someone who's like firmly planted in Generation X, like I still want to go out, I still want to enjoy music. I don't want to go to a, necessarily to a rave where I'm up till eight in the morning, but I want to engage in that some way. You know, how, how have you found that as, as somebody who's in like very specifically in that world? So uh, no, that's a great question. So check it out. Number one, one thing I love about kind of having been there for when the, that record first came out and now it's, you know, 25 years later is that, you know what, all the kids that are going out today, they weren't there. So if it was like, you know, if there was giant admitting here, uh, you know, if it was like, you know, I remember back in the day, you know, there's a lot of records like, oh yeah, that's a doc record. That's a Yano record. That's a, you know, that, you know, Garth plays that. So like back then, like 
I, at least this is how I felt about it. I'm like, I'm like, oh, you can't, you know, you can't drop that record really because if you do, you're just basically sounding like that person, you know, and that was, that, was yeah, 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 yeah. that record at the time. It's a lot different now. You know what I'm saying? Like you can play, um, you know, uh, you can, you can play these huge songs again and in your own context, you know, without no judgment. Right. And because it's new to that, it's new to the, it's new to these people. You know, or even if there's people that are our age in the audience, it's like, oh, awesome, I get to hear it again. You know what I mean? And in a different context, where which is honestly any record, it doesn't matter who plays what. Like you're always, you know, I, I would, my expectation or my standard is that like whatever music you're playing, you're making it your own. You know what I mean? So, so that's that's one kind of good thing. So I, I you know what, I I play I play uh, nostalgia sets. I've played plenty of those. Not necessarily nostalgia events. I don't know how I really I feel about that. I think it was cool. Jesus, like I think it was cool. You know, 10, 15 years ago, the first time they were doing those. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now I'm just kind of like, you know what? It's new that, to everybody again, and I don't think we need to like stay root. You know, I'm mean? kind of like, oh yeah, back in the day it was so much better. It's like, no, you know what? There's I can tell you with certainty that there are parties like that today. You yeah. know what I mean? Or, you know, or there were, right? Yeah. Um, there's several, there's several uh, people I can think of in LA and the Bay Area that are doing stuff like that now. Shout out to the basement. Um, what's called, there's a lot of people doing that. And, you know, seek and you shall find. And to, yeah. and for really for DJs, it's like, you know what? Play it. Just play whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Weave it into, you know, we, there's a lot of music that's timeless, you know, that you can play with stuff that just came out today. And, and that's, I mean, I, I practice what I preach. Like I do that all the time, you know, my sets, maybe in every set that I play, maybe 20%, at least 20% of that music is from, you know, years and years ago. Maybe yeah. it was a big record 20 years ago, you know what I mean? But, but you know, if you're just somebody that's starting out today, you would never know that, you know what I mean? There's so many of those records, you know what I mean? 100%, so, yeah. and, and I think yeah. it's super, I, I mean, you know, I think to dial it into, Kind of having these outlets and connecting with people like you and I are doing right now. I mean, I think I think this is it. To be perfectly honest, it's like I think I think we just need to take what we're doing to the people that we already know, right? And and kind of connect in that way. Yeah, just grow it out. You know, I mean, what the, exactly. the radio show has shown me, like, you know, one person leads to another, to another, mm -hmm. to another, to another. Like that's how it's grown. Like that's that's and why I, you know you might see a crew right? from Alhambra one week and you know, Long Beach, the next and the Bay area, the next. And mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because yeah. it literally, it's like one person leads to another. And, and that's how the scene grew originally too. Right. It was like friends and, and friends and friends. And then a different yeah. thing. I think you have people with experience that know what the hell they're doing now. And, and so the, like the quality level, the quality level is just so much higher. Right. And you, and you think about like what you can bring to the table now, which is great, man. I am a, 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 a huge huge fan of, of what you're doing Raph, and and i want to um bring up a couple more things before before i cut you loose and that's this uh one what do you have queued up for um omakase over the next uh like few weeks what's what's on the radar for that what's on the ra what's under the radar <laughs> what's under the radar for that <laughs> um well i've been catching up so the pandemic has afforded me the the time to catch up on posting sets so, so for anyone who's been following, you know, my Instagram or, or whatnot, like I've been posting a different set every day, except for the weekends for like, I think it's going on two months now. And I have about two or three weeks left to go. That's, <laughs> That's how many sets, man. That's so good. Um, and then beyond that, I'm going to start, I'm going to start um, asking people to do mixes again guest spots cool. on the show so i know you you know i, I know i'm getting one from you right like uh, hey man that, R yeah, I, yeah the steven art steven art zygote is coming up soon um i you know I, I you know i'll put that shit on blast don't worry i'm gonna let everybody i'll shout that from the rooftop man for the opportunity i really appreciate that because you know we had this conversation offline a little bit earlier too and i'm you know there are DJ producers, and I'm and I'm a producer DJ because I played I played music way before I got into the DJ thing. I played drums, I played guitar, I played in, in indie bands. I still play uh, in a band called The Summer of Flux with Aaron Mobley, Dr. Aaron Mobley, Berkeley. Shoo, shoo, what's up, bro? Um, 
Um, so I still I still come from a, 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 a musical production place where I where I, I, I kind of incorporate that in what I do. But man, you know, I uh, I just how long have you been how long have you been DJing? Because I know it's been at this point it's got to be what twenty years. Twenty years, yeah. So, it's been so I'm, so I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm very intrigued for what you know for what you're gonna play as someone who's been playing music for twenty years. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I, I'm that's, that's always that's always. Uh, exciting for me like uh, like you know whenever like i've had like dave rubens you know shout out dave rubenstein dr you know whenever he him and nick come over from youtube like i he's always played uh like he's kind of like the halloween resident for for omakase like i wouldn't come over every halloween and dude he always busts out some like crazy stuff like what like well, you know, did you just play music, like right? you know that's some DR cover of the Elvira right? theme or something or like some industrial record that or some UB record that, you know what I mean? Like something from the shadows, right? And like, um, and, and, but, and that comes from him playing music for so long. Like he's, he just has this like wealth of knowledge that he's just putting out there. So I'm always, whenever I have a, somebody who's been playing for a long time, like I'm always like, all right, man, like, you know what? Play something that just came out or play or deep dig, you know, deep dive into the crates. And this is like, don't worry about what you normally play out somewhere. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just go off you know what i mean like like my my ears are open and and you know if you listen to the show pretty regularly you'll you'll you know anyone who, who's been listening the last five years they'll be like yeah i make it be a like a full-on funk set mm -hmm. one week to like next week it's like disco next week it's like full-on techno like you know what i mean like it, it varies a lot and the idea is that if you're if you like music if you like mixing because there's a big difference between i think when people talk about DJs, you know, there's a big difference between selectors and mixers. You know what I mean? Like, I like yeah. to think, I think it's more as a mixer. You know what I mean? I, I, I kind of ingest all this music and like, and I recontextualize it in my own way. I think that, you know what I mean? That's why I think the DJs that are mixers, that's what they're doing. It's like, there's like this, uh, there's a symbiotic relationship between producers who are making their music and then the DJs that are interpreting that in their own way. And yeah. I mean, and that's the relationships that that's what I'm interested in is like how do people like recontextualize this music? You know, you know what what's what's you know, people call it journeys, but you know, what I mean I always kind of like feel like True, but you know, what's that personality like? You know what yeah. I mean? So so yeah, that's uh well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's set, man. Funny. I've been really taking it, I've been really taking it really seriously, especially on the on the DJ front and kind of using DJing as to as a as a as a means of production in, in itself as well. Um, in fact, you know, one of the things that I, you know, it, everything has a different purpose, right? So I've got one that I, I did called Half House of Affirmations Volume One. That's all yeah, really yeah. Kind of, that's kind of oriented for me. Well, it starts off with this just crazy, crazy build of like, you know, ambient sound and Phoenicia and sort of like there's all these YouTube videos of people that are like really claiming that they're gods. It's a trip. Anyway, so there's this whole thing and I've got a through line on this on this thing as far as that stuff goes. But like the recontextualization that you talked about, especially in DJ culture, is something that I take really seriously. So. I really want to kind of like take my time with the mix and, 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 and build it up in a certain way, but also have a lot of fun with it too. Like, I mean, I, there's so many DJs over the, year, the years that I've heard that have just completely recontextualized things. And that's, I, hopefully I can, I can do that for you guys and, uh, you know, get that, get that on blast. So oh, I know then, you will. I know thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you already know. I know you will. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much, man. I really, really appreciate your time, Raph, coming and, and doing the Architects and Heroes live stream today. My where, pleasure, can people find, where can people find your stuff? You can go to omakaseshow.com and okay. uh, there's links to all my socials on there as well. I so. know. I know there's some way to do this on here. Damn, dude. I was going to try to put your links up on the screen if I can, but I don't know if I can, man. This is kind of a... Oh, well, I'll put it no here. Yeah, no worries. But Here's the thing. Here's yeah, the thing. Go to right now, just to let you know what I'm doing with these with these shows, and I'm doing it from uh, what I did with Miguel, what I did with uh, Slope 114, what I did with Riz Maslin. All of those are archived, and then we're doing the whole thing on the Architects and Heroes website that has all your links, all your info, all your Bandcamp stuff, all your music, all in one place. 
So it's okay. easy for that and I'll, I'll put that on. This is just kind of using content in, in smart ways too, right? So anyway, that's a whole different tech conversation for us to have, my friend. So Raf, thank you so much. Yeah, man, awesome. Old, Thanks for having me. Old code yeah. is definitely in the building remotely. <laughs> and uh, so where they can find the Omakase uh, radio uh, on- Yeah, you can listen to Omakase every Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m. on KUCI 88.9 FM, Irvine. Or you can go to KUCI.org and listen online. Fantastic. All right, Ref. Thank you very much, brother. We'll be in touch soon, all right? All right, man. Take care. Right, man. Take care. Bye-bye.